about it on an analog side. If you were going to work for change in your neighborhood, what, was the, what would you start doing? Well, you'd develop a, your concept for change, and then you would probably go through your network. You'd go to school, you'd go to your church, you'd go to your neighbors, and you'd start to say, um, there's something I want to change, and I'd like you to be part of it, and I'd like you to help me do it. Right? I mean, that's the way it's traditionally taken place. So now, if you're in Los Angeles or Detroit or Washington, D.C., and you want to do it, you have this amazing tool set for free. You can use MySpace, you can use Facebook, and you can ask people on both levels, both the analog human network and the digital network, and say, I'd like you to help me work for change. And we can aggregate here, we can talk here, we can converse, we can organize here, and this is how it can happen, and we can grow numbers. And I'd like you to ask 10 of your friends to be part of this as well, because we're building a movement around this change. Whatever that change may be, that's how you start. The, the, the barrier has never been this low. The, the, the risk has never been this low. The rewards have never been this high. First of all, the student is now a participant and is no longer simply a receptor. Uh, and they're able to actively engage in um, what they're studying um, to digital tools and if we look at, I mean, we expand this idea of digital tools to not just the tool itself but to the, certainly the internet, it, I, I think it's really hasting a lot of change in education where we're starting to look at uh, these broader horizontal models of education rather than these deep verticals of education. Um, I think that it is, um, and, and, and there's a lot of people who are working in this territory as well, opening up the possibility of learning, kind of like looking at the discrepancies of have and have not for educational opportunities or access to education and uh, providing a, a greater flattening, to borrow Tom Friedman's term, of access to education. Um, the way in which we learn is different. The way in which I see my two-year-old daughter interface with uh, the iPad is markedly different in the way in which she learns and can access information. Um, it's no longer, it, it, it's, it's very empowering in that the individual now can seek information on their own accord and assemble their own views, their own positions. Uh, it's no longer something you have to wait to have dropped down to you. You can, and, and it as a participatory uh, platform as well, we look at Wikipedia as something where um, it is uh, group sourced. And, uh, it, 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 and, and, and right now it provides a primary source of education for so many kids and adults alike. So I, th I think that, I mean, it's such a huge question. I, f I feel like, wow, there's so much to talk about and the way it changes. It's just a fundamental shift and it's almost, the shift is almost so big. It's like that old joke of like, you know, you can't get there from here. You need to completely rethink what education could be with these new tools to start to understand where it's going. Well, that's something that everyone's asking right now. Is there too much meat? Is there too much information? Is there saturation? And people aren't opting out of it. People are trying to find solutions to how to best curate. That's part of the contemporary zeitgeist right now, right? How do you start to curate? We all do it, right? We all have our RSS feeds. We all kind of filter in different ways and uh, we cope. And there's a lot in the stuff that we don't see, we don't see. I mean, there's only so much that we can digest. Uh, but I think that what we're starting to see is. Um, more tools for sorting media, for doing smart searches uh, that really refine, and certainly the semantic web is helping that, where it's no longer keyword based, but it's idea based. Um, and you know, I'm sure we all have this experience where it's very easy to tendentially run off into these valleys of information and spend hours and hours in them, and that's learning at the same time. So um, can there be too much information? Uh, for me, no. that we're still in the infancy of seeing the way in which social media can work for real positive social change. Um, there's been a tremendous amount written about this. Uh, the cost to organize, the cost to aggregate is zero now. And that used to be the real barrier to any kind of organization was that they could only grow to a certain size before they required uh, basically more capital in order to reach that next level because this is the sheer cost of communication and management. And as we see now with new tools simple as MySpace and Facebook, you can aggregate to a very, very large size at no cost. There's no need for bricks and mortar. And it can happen on a, uh, crowdsource is kind of a hackneyed term, but on a group shared responsibility basis. So uh, digital tools allow uh, um, um, organizations to grow very, very quickly at no cost, which is key. B, it also allows multiple people uh, anybody who wants to message into that system, to message in that system and uh, contribute and take ownership. And then from a distribution standpoint, it can reach anybody. 
so as we look at each individual such as yourself and myself having that social network around, it, we really are in our society, every society is a companion of micro networks that are all linked together. Just tapping into those micro networks for messaging now, I mean, that's, and, and if we kind of take all those things and put them together, we realize that we're just at the beginning of being able to see real, real social change with these new digital tools. Thank you.